Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Adventure of D, second edition, which I gotta say, I think overall is a big improvement on the original Adventure of D, which I covered many, many moons ago. Gosh, probably over half a decade ago. If you want to see that original run through, you can hit that eye up in the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes um, to show to see just how much the game has changed. And certainly the biggest change is the art. The original Adventure of D probably has to be one of the worst looking card games of all time. And uh, I mean, I, I hate to say it, I don't want to cast aspersions on an artist's talent, but it was just really rough looking. And um, while this is certainly not going to be, uh, you know, compete with uh, the art of the Miko or Vincent Dutre, it is a good, solid looking, uh, attractive game now. And I am so happy for that because I have always, from the first edition and the second edition, been so amazingly impressed by just how much gameplay designer Jack Darwood is able to fit into a tiny little tuck box. This is the whole box for the game. This is the entire game. But as it promises on the box, you will never play the same game twice with all the variety of locations and heroes and encounters. Um, you know, the core game loop is really simple. Um, you have a handful of cards. You spend these cards to move around the world. You're basically uh, fighting a war of attrition uh, during your turn to try and get as much as you can done with the cards you have. So they're wearing you down as you um, travel from one place to another. Um, but every time you move from one place to another, the card you play doesn't go directly into this card pile. This is a shadow that might attack you. And that could really bleed you dry, but it could also be an opportunity because if the shadow does jump you, if you've got a card that can beat it, you can get a really big payday. Or, if you don't want to burn your cards fighting shadows, uh, this is one of the new changes. This is a very significant change. You can now spend your magic to um, wear out the shadows instead. And that's very, very cool. If you fight shadows with a card, you get magic. Which means future shadows you can beat without having to spend cards. It's a really nice little one-two loop, and it works great. And it's essential because it accompanies the other big change of the game, which is the original game, your hand size was 8. And now your hand size, maximum hand size was eight. Now it's six. And I believe the reason that was done is to speed it up. Because with the original game, you could start with a hand uh, very often with six or seven or eight cards. And a turn could take a long time because there was a lot of things you could do. Um, and, you know, you were draining cards quicker because you couldn't avoid shadows by spending power. So you uh, occasionally had to lose more cards from that. But you could just get a lot more done. And I would say turns are now much, much quicker, which is a huge deal for the competitive play or... The cooperative play, which original version did not cover, but now it has a nice, solid little co-op game, which is basically almost the exact same thing as the solo game. With uh, The trick is, you still only have a certain amount of time. Both players are effectively playing a solo game, and to win, both players have to make it through the tower and achieve all the requirements. Um, and the big thing is, you know, once you're playing cooperatively, hey, uh, at the beginning of your turn, when I'm deciding what events are coming out, I'm not deciding to try to keep events from you that are really good, but I might be sacrificing to ensure events you really want to do stick around longer. And that's really nice, that I have to give stuff up to help you achieve your goals. And um, yeah, and, and then on top of that, there's always been the uh, notion that um, when one player moves, the other player could follow. Uh, in, a, in a competitive game, that came up every once in a while where you would just try to hitch a ride off your opponents. But now, when it's your teammate, it becomes all the more important to be as efficient as possible. So, um, I, you know, the original, I said, Adventure of D, I mostly played it solo originally. I would still say it's at its best a solo game because it's just a really fast little thing. You're going to finish a game in, uh, as a solo player in under a half an hour. I mean, the box says 25 minutes per player. I would say that's about right. And that is ideal because this is a quick Fun little romp where you have to make some tough choices, some tough compromises. Uh, I, this card will save me now, but I know I'm going to need this card later. What am I going to do later when I don't have it? Um, you know, and, and the game constantly throws those your way, and it is engaging. You know, it's, it, it doesn't reinvent the wheel. It's not a super big. It's you know, it's not going to replace Mage Knight or anything like that. But it is a fun, solid time, and as a solo game, it is lovely. So much game in such a little box. The competitive game and the co-op game, I kind of find myself wishing there was something they could have done to get it a little bit quicker. 
so that it doesn't go upwards of an hour. Because again, it's a, it's a light little trifle of a game, and it works. But Jen and I are thinking, man, if this were a half-hour game, this would work great as a call. I'd almost like wish there was some kind of, hey, players can play simultaneously or something. I'm not quite sure what. Or maybe players can, in a in a, so, a co-op game, could just start with more so they don't have to level up as much before they get to the big fight. Maybe? I don't know. Um, like I said, I think first and foremost, Adventure to D has always been a lovely solo game and it continues to be and if you're looking for uh, you know a, a very light fast paced romp where luck can play a big part which uh, is definitely something to bear in mind for the competitive game but I mean you know, I mean yeah, I could be over here, and it'd be so lucky that this event happens to show up right next. It's right next to me, but my opponents can always pay resources to make it go away, which always makes the competitive kind of a little cutthroat. Oh, I'm really sorry. I can't let you have that, even though that's what you want, because we're racing to go up to the tower first. So um, I think the co-op works better for us. The co-op is a little bit on the long side. I'd love to see a way to shorten it um, to get closer to that sweet under a half an hour game length, but it still works. And it has always worked. And it works now better than ever. As a, uh, a solo game, The Adventure of D, 2nd Edition. And that's the run, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.